Today we're going to be talking about a phenomenon in electromagnetism known as Lenz's Law. Now, Lenz's Law can be easily demonstrated with a copper pipe and well, two objects I have here, which you will shortly find out what they are. So, I'm going to take my first object. Now, this, just to mention, this copper pipe is totally normal, no trickery, nothing weird going on. So, I'm going to take the first object and drop it down the pipe. It falls pretty much as you'd expect. You know, gravity is the only force acting on it, um, and it pulls it straight down quickly at an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. But if we take our second object and do the exact same thing with it, it took a lot longer to get there. Let's see that again. Why is the second object taking such a long time to fall? There must be some difference between them, and indeed there is. We can see it pretty easily because this object is a magnet and the other is not. So why does the magnet fall so much more slowly than the non-magnet? You might think that it's because it's interacting somehow and this is also magnetic. Uh, maybe the interaction there is stopping the object or slowing it down. But in fact, there's no interaction between these two. Only when it falls through is there an interaction. Why is that? Well, like I said, it's called Lenz's Law. And essentially, Lenz's Law says, if you have a time-varying magnetic field, it creates a current that opposes the direction of, that creates another magnetic field that opposes the direction of motion of the original one. That is a very complicated, so we're going to break it down into a few steps. So, we know that we have a magnet, and Often when you want to draw a magnet and model the magnetic field around it, it's nice to draw field lines, magnetic field lines, coming out of one pole and going to another. And the strength, uh, or the, the flux of a magnetic field, how much magnetic field is there in some unit of, of volume or area, um, you can look at by just the density of the field lines. So we have this magnet, and we drop it down a copper pipe. Now, the first thing that happens is, at some point in the pipe, so let's say right here, you start out with a very weak field, because you know the, the magnetic field uh, of a magnet gets much weaker as you go far away. Right now, there's no attraction, or very little, between the board and the magnet. Only when I get really close do we get something. So, the magnetic field is very weak at the beginning when we first drop it in. But as the magnet falls, the magnetic field gets stronger and stronger and stronger before then getting weaker and weaker and weaker again. So because you have that change in magnetic field, you get a current that travels around the copper pipe. So the first thing that happens is we know that a changing magnetic field, which in an ENM we like to write uh, magnetic field as B fields, If you have a change in magnetic field, that leads to an induced current. Now, an induced current isn't enough to explain why this slows down. So, I mean, now there are electrons zooming around. What does that have to do? How does that create a force that stops the magnet from falling as fast as it should? Well, when you have a current, all currents are moving charges. And moving charges create magnetic fields. So, if we have a wire, for example, uh, and let's say current is moving that way, a current traveling through a wire produces a magnetic field and a circle around it. So, we now have a current that's traveling around this pipe. And the important thing about the induced current here is that it's always going to be flowing in a direction such that the magnetic field that we know it produces opposes the direction of the magnet. So, now this current produces a magnetic field pushing up against the magnetic field of the magnet. And because of this, you have the two magnetic fields almost acting as a, as a cushion, and the, the magnet falls far more slowly because it's facing resistance from this magnetic field. So you start with a changing B field, that creates an induced current, and the induced current leads to another B field opposing the first. 
That's how Lenz's law works. And that's why this effect happens.